worship as we hear the prelude.
We welcome all of you this morning, and uh, we wish all of our mothers a happy Mother's Day. And as part of uh, Mother's Day, you can see in the order of service today that there's going to be a special gift for our mothers, and that's the men, the men of the congregation. Following the uh, offertory hymn, we'll have a time of singing for our mothers, so we look forward to that. Your announcements are in your bulletin. Um, this Tuesday, we have our board meeting, so uh, please make note of that. At this time, uh, Weston has an announcement this morning. Thank you to everyone who came to our flower sale yesterday. There are three left in the gathering place for $12 each. See Melissa or Rachel if you're interested. We are also collecting boxed food to take to National Youth Conference for offering. If you would like to participate, please leave the boxed food in the gathering place. Thank you. Thank you, Weston. This morning, uh, we were blessed by having um, a presentation by uh, Evelyn Dick. And this time, I'm going to ask uh, her son to come forward just to give you some greetings and an announcement. Good morning, and thanks for having us here. Um, it's so good to be with the uh, Myerstown congregation. Um, it just really is, and it, it's really good in more than one way. Uh, not only your, your gracious support of Vine Ministry, but also this is my mom and dad's home congregation. Uh, of course, they were married in this church, but, well, it was actually the church up the road. So that should give you some idea about, yeah, my mom's a grandmother and great-grandmother. So um, I also wanted to thank Grace Ziegler for the wonderful accommodations and hospitality last night. The breakfast was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vine Ministry is a, is a mission that uh, my mom and dad started uh, many, many moons ago um, in Haiti. And as a result of, of their hard work, there is a, uh, a church planted in downtown Port-au-Prince Along with a growing congregation, there is a clinic at that location that is growing, and um, and we also raise support to send kids to school. Um, in a nutshell, that's that's where we're at and and starting and growing from. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, there is a sign-up sheet for our newsletter that comes out once a month. It's in the gathering place on our table. You can just write your name and, and address right there. Uh, thanks again, and thank you. Okay. Do we have any other announcements this morning? Let's all stand for our call to worship. And join me in the responsive reading this morning, taken from Psalm 139, in honor of Mother's Day. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Let's remain standing if you're able, and let's sing our opening songs of praise. With the praise team, I invite the praise team to come forward as they lead us in a song to praise. I am, and here's my heart, Lord.
let us just focus on the Lord today and worship him. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you and praise you for your Holy Spirit, which is present here this morning. We pray, oh God, that you move among this time, among your congregation this morning. Lord, we are yours. Pray now that we would just humble ourselves and hear what you have to say to us this morning. Lord, this is your time. This is your worship. Help us just to focus on what you want for us this day. We pray, O God, that you lead us in this time of worship. May your Holy Spirit speak to us and change us, Lord, for your glory and honor. We pray, O God, for anyone this morning who has burdens, Lord, that you would just speak to them and that they would lay the burdens down the altar this morning. May we always give our hearts and lives to you. Lead us as we worship you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, and we thank the praise team for our songs. This time, we're going to have the cherub choir come 
forward and they'll sing for us this morning. Children can come forward for the children's story if they're not all up here already. <laughs> everybody good okay besides Sunday what is today Mother's Day. Mother's Day yes did anybody do something special for your mom like get a card yeah, yeah. you made one yeah. wonderful that's made you made a butterfly I know it's pretty daddy helped you daddies are good for that aren't they Besides the butterfly, thank you for the kisses, honey. I got a card, too. Look at this card that my awesome husband gave me. Look at that. Mommy. You know, cards are one way we can tell somebody we love them. What are the other ways you can tell your mama that you love them? Sit down right here. What other ways can you tell your mom that you love them? Make stuff for them. Make stuff for them. There you go. What other ways can you tell your mom that you love them? Hey, Clark, what other ways can you tell your mom that you love them? You can give her, can give her flowers. Give her flowers. That's a good one. How about make your bed without being told? What do you think about that one? Hmm, maybe. What else can you do? Yeah, what else can you do? Does anybody know? Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Give them hugs. Give them hugs. I love that one. Hugs are the best, you know. Now, Pastor Marty's going to talk about a lady today. Her name is Hannah. Everybody say Hannah. Hannah. Hannah didn't have any children at all, but she really wanted a baby. Hannah wanted a baby, so she prayed. All right, now start praying. What do you do? Do you close your eyes, hold your hands? There you go. She's praying to God, and she says, God, if you give me a baby, I will give him back to you. So open your eyes. What do you think happened? She got a baby. God gave her a baby. And when he was old enough, do you think she gave him back to God? Yes, because she got, loved God so much. Now, can you imagine your mom taking you right now and putting you here in the sanctuary and telling Pastor Marty, okay, he's yours? That's what Hannah did. I know. Look at Pastor Marty. <laughs> she gave her son to the priest for them to raise up into a godly man and so that he can be a priest just like them. Can you imagine that? 
All right, one of the ways that we can show love is by doing what God commands. And Brooke is going to read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. All right, listen to this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your fa- father and mother, which is the first commandment with a, the, with a promise. All right, so first off, you got to obey who? Your parents. And then next, you have to honor your father and mother. Do you think that means, like, being polite to them? What do you think? Yeah? All right, do you all ever say please and thank you? Do you say it to your parents? Yeah, I hope so. We should do things at home that we also do here, right? So we got to be polite. God loves that when we do that. Okay, another way to show God love is by showing love to other people. So how can you show love to other people? How can you show love to other people? Yep, by also like that. Yep, by telling them please and thank you. How else can you show love to other people? A hug, I know. What if they were crying? Could you go up to them and say, hey, are you okay? Right? Yes. How about sharing a toy with them? That was showing love, isn't it? So, not only today do we need to obey our parents, show them that we love them by honoring them, which means being polite to them, doing what they're, we're supposed to do, right? But also show God love in everything that we do by being good and showing love to other people, right? And doing what God says. All right, so as we celebrate Mother's Day, let's tell Mom that we love her. And more important, let's remember to show her that we love her. And as we worship today, let us tell God we love him. But more important, let's remember to show him that we love him by loving who? One another, right? Yes. We show God love by loving one another. All right, so let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Dear Lord. We have come to your house today to say, I love you. Help us to go out of here today and show you that we love you by our actions. We thank you. For our mother and grandmother's love. We also thank you for our aunt's love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my wild and crazy friends. Some are ready to go to nursery, right? Zero and three go to nursery. Everybody else, go back and have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Let us um, join our offertory statement as we prepare to give our offerings to the Lord. Let us read from First Chronicles twenty nine, eleven to twelve. Let's read that in unison. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is a kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Let us pray. God, we pray that you would bless this time, bless this offering. Bless, Lord, those that that can give and those that cannot give for whatever reason. We pray, O God, that we would continue to have a heart to give to you. Pray that you use these gifts, Lord, for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our offertory hymn is found in the brown hymnal, uh, Joy Unspeakable, number 414. And the ushers can come forward as we take up our morning offering.
this time we'll turn it over to Earl this morning. Okay, men, it's time to sing for the mothers. Come on forward. They're going to pick out two songs for us to sing. Bring your brown hymnals along. Come on, men. Doesn't matter if you can't sing that well. Come on up and sing.
Thanks, fellas. I expect to see most of you in the choir next fall. <laughs> Women, you can return a favor on, on Father's Day. You can do the same thing. Thank you very much. In your bulletins, you'll see an insert here for uh, prayer concerns. We need to remember those who are listed in prayer. I'd like to add one other name that was given to me. This is a third grader who is uh, battling leukemia named Samuel, Samuel Genovich. Samuel Genovich, uh, he's a third grader battling leukemia, so we need to keep uh, Samuel in prayer. Let's uh, bow our heads for a morning prayer. God, we thank you and praise you for this time of worship, for this time that's set apart, Lord, for honoring you. We thank you for sending us a Savior whose name is Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that if there's anyone here this morning who does not know Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior, that they would make that decision commitment today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the worshipers this morning, uh, for the men of the congregation who sang, for the uh, children who sang, for the children who are part of uh, the children's story. Lord, help us to know that this is all honoring you. We don't do this to put on a show. We don't do this to impress people. We do this, Lord, because we love you and because we love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God, on this Mother's Day, we want to uh, honor and recognize all of our mothers. We also want to remember those mothers who have passed on, the, mem the many memories that we have of our mothers have passed. We just pray, Lord, that we would honor our mothers this, this day and Give them this, this day of, of um, honor that they deserve. And God, this morning we pray for the ones on our prayer list, ones who are struggling, Lord, with illnesses and trials and tribulations, Lord. With this life, Lord, is filled with trial and tribulations. We all experience them, but we lift all these names this morning who need you. Pray especially for Samuel Genovich, this third grader battling leukemia. We pray, O oh God, for his support. We pray for his healing. We pray for this young one, Lord. Give this uh, young one healing in the name of Jesus. Give the family strength as they go through a very difficult time. Send your blessings upon his life right now. Pray that you continue to be with us as we look to your word this morning for truth. Thank you and your praise. You and pray all this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn in your scripture text this morning or Bibles to 1 Samuel 2, verses 1 through 10. This morning... In honor of Mother's Day, we're going to be looking at a mother in the Bible named Hannah. Hannah was introduced this morning in the children's story. <coughs> the story of Hannah actually begins in the beginning of a chapter 1. But I'll be reading Hannah's prayer from 1 Samuel 2, verses 1 through 10. Hear the word of the Lord. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. 
Let no arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and those who stumbled are girded with strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, and the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has borne seven, and she who has many children has become feeble. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. He will guard the feet of his saints But the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength no man shall prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. May God add blessing with the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. God, we thank you for sending us your word through the Bible, through your Holy Spirit, through the words that Jesus spoke. And now I pray that you guide this message, guide the meditations of my heart, Lord. Guide every word I speak. Pray that this message, Lord, would bring honor and glory to our God and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Hannah was one joyful new mother. Hannah is just full of praise and joy for her Lord and Savior. Her heart is just rejoicing in God in this prayer. Why? Well, God just answered her prayer. God gave her the one desire that was in her life, that was in her heart, and that was to give birth to a son after the Lord had closed her womb. Look what Hannah says when she prayed to God. Look at 1 Samuel 1, verse 27. She said, For this child I prayed... And the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. In other words, she gave her son, her newborn son, to God. Now, Hannah is not your typical mother. Some would say she's extraordinary. She did not pray to have a baby in order to make her happy. She didn't choose to have a baby so she can show the baby off to everybody where she goes. She didn't have a baby so that her kid could take care of her when she gets old. She made a vow to God about her baby. That's an important lesson that we hear She made a vow to God about her baby. And in her vow, she said, God, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. Now think about that sacrifice. What a sacrifice. And if you listen to Hannah's prayer, if you're listening to Hannah's prayer in 1 Samuel 2, you'll see how her prayer is focused on the Lord, entirely on the Lord. Her prayer is not focused on herself. Her prayer is not focused on her newborn son, as beautiful as that son was, I'm sure. Her prayer is not focused on overcoming her circumstance, as difficult as it was. She thanks God as the giver more than the gift. Now, even though Hannah is a joyful mother, at this time in 1 Samuel 2, it came at a price. 
As we see in 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah went through a lot of inner turmoil. God closed her womb, which I'm sure was a difficult thing for any woman. Hannah had her struggles with God. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10, it says, She was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. So Hannah was not some super mom. Hannah was not some you know, angel that's just on fire for God and happy all the time. She's been through a war. She was through a war. Before she had the joy of the Lord, she had to deal with a problem in her past, in her background. Let's look at that by looking at Hannah's background. Hannah had an unusual background <clears throat> compared to mothers today. She was one of two wives of a man named Elkanah. Elkanah was a Levite, and the Levites were the people in charge of worship in the tabernacle and temple. And we see that Hannah was someone who grew up worshiping the Lord. You would say today that she, she, was a, uh, she grew up in the church, a churchgoer. Both her and her husband worshiped before the Lord. If you look at chapter 1, verse 19, it says, They rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house. So that was pretty much her life. Worshiping the Lord. Now, what about the other wife? This is where the problem came for Hannah, the other wife. The other wife, whose name is Penina, ended up being Hannah's rival, or one would say maybe even her enemy. Penina made Hannah's life miserable. She made her life miserable by provoking her for not being able to have children, which is a very sensitive problem for women today. Infertility is a very sensitive issue. You just don't provoke a woman for not being able to have children. You just don't go there. Why is that? Well, if you look in the Jewish Old Testament culture, it was a blessing to have children. If you write these two verses down, Psalm 127, verse 3, In Psalm 139, 13, 127, verse 3, says, Children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. So it was a reward to have children. Psalm 139, 13. David says, For you, God, for my inward parts, who covered me in my mother's womb, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139. That portion is just a wonderful illustration of mothers and giving birth and having the child in the womb. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made because it points back to our mothers. Our mothers are the responsible for bringing us into this world. You know, I, I thank the Lord for our mothers today. And I personally... I'm more grateful for mothers since I've been married and since I have kids. Because I know that Rachel spends, sacrifices a lot of time being a stay-at-home mom with the two boys. That's quite a sacrifice for all mothers today to do. Our mothers are the primary ones who raise our children. They have that biological connection to our children that God created Now, as fathers, we're important too. Maybe we don't feel that way, but we are important to kids. We need to do our best in raising our kids, be there for our kids, but we have to admit we can't compare to mom. Just ask our son Benjamin about that. (laughs) And if there's ever a day when mothers need a day for themselves, this is a day. This is a day. So I would would advise uh, all husbands... You know, ask what your wife wants today for Mother's Day. Don't assume that you know what she wants. She needs to tell you what she wants. And honor that request. Honor that request for her. Let's get back to Hannah. And 
There was another problem Hannah had. This may sound a little funny. The other problem Hannah had in her past was the men in her life. There are two men mentioned in Scripture, her husband and her priest, Hannah's husband and priest. We see in chapter 1, verse 8, when Hannah was in grieving, her husband said to her, Why are you sad? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Not the right thing to say to your wife when she's grieving. In other words, he thought her problem was all about him. Just totally, he just didn't, totally didn't have a clue about Hannah's grief of not being able to have children. Then on top of that, her priest, Eli, thought she was drunk. When, she, when the, the Eli saw her pray in the temple, she thought she was drunk. And you see that in chapter 1, verses 14 to 15. Now this says that it is most important for men and husbands to be understanding and supportive of the women in their lives, especially during times of grieving. Even if it's something that we as men can't relate to or understand, we need to listen. If it's important to her, it's important to you. Now, Eli, Hannah's priest, eventually got it. He understood that, hey, this request to have a son is really important to Hannah. And so look what he said to Hannah in 1 Samuel 1, 17 to 18. He says, Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. He says this to Hannah. Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way, And ate, and her face was no longer sad. One thing we need to remember is that because she was so bitter, she could not eat. That's why she was so sad at that time. But this is where it's important to get the approval of those people who are close to us. Now, when it comes to um, getting the approval of people... We know from Scripture that it's more important to get the approval of God and not man. And that's true. We should always seek the approval of God before any person. But in this case, in this story, Eli was Hannah's priest. And it was very important for someone to get the approval of their priest. Because Hannah's priest represented God. He was God's spokes, spokesperson. And once she got Eli's approval of her request before God, she was no longer sad. So what do you do when you're grieving? What did Hannah do when she grieved, when she was struggling with this concept of not being able to have, have children? How, to, how, to handle, how did Hannah respond to her grief Well, she took it to the Lord. She took it to the Lord. She worshiped the Lord. Look at Samuel, 1 Samuel 1, verse 19. He's talking about Hannah and her husband. They rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to the house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Verse 20. So it came to pass in a process of time. The hand conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. Now, it's important to look at this. It says, In the process of time, Hannah conceived. Okay? We don't know how long this process of time was, but I'm sure it was a long time. It wasn't immediate. You know, when we pray for something, we want immediate answers from God, don't we? We want God to take care of things right away. But something tells me the process of time when Hannah asked for this child, and by the time she actually got the child, was not a short time. Because this was her request. This was Hannah's struggle. You might even say it was her personal issue with God. You know, we all have personal issues with God, don't we? 
things take time. And if you're here this morning and you can name your own issue with God that you're struggling with, you're not alone. Throughout the Bible, we find men and women, we find leaders in the church who had their own struggles, who had their own issues with God. Paul was one of them, the Apostle Paul. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. We're talking about issues that people have with God. The Apostle Paul says this, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations... A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, to beat me, lest I be exalted by measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and approaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Okay, so Paul's issue, Paul's struggle with God was his thorn in his flesh. Scholars aren't really sure what that thorn was. Some physical ailment, we don't know exactly, but it was something that was really... Um, a struggle, okay? He pleaded with God to take away his thorn. Three times God said no. I'm sure that was hard for Paul. But we have to remember one thing. If you look at verse 7 of 2 Corinthians 12, Paul says, by the abundance of revelations. In other words, Paul is admitting there that God has given him many revelations Okay, God has given him many gifts. He's saying, yes, God, you bless me with many revelations, many gifts. God bless him with so much, but there was this one thing that was a problem. That was my thorn in my side. It will not go away. And who knows? If God would have taken away his thorn, Paul was thinking, okay, I would get too prideful. In fact... Paul is honest and said, my thorn was given to me by Satan. You're thinking, boy, that's not very good, is it? But pride is not good either. Pride is not good, especially spiritual pride. And this is why God told Paul, my strength is made perfect in weakness. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Let's go back to Hannah. So Hannah, before she gave birth, was in a very weak state of mind, in a weak state of spirit, when she knew she could not conceive of a child. That's when she gave it to God. And we can hear her struggle, we can hear weakness when she made this vow to God. And that's when God answered her. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11, we hear her state of mind. Where it says, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I'll give him to the Lord all the days of his life. Now this is where we should ask, what is Hannah's main desire in her life? The main point of this is not so much the fact that God answered Hannah's prayer. We should ask ourselves, what is Hannah's main desire in her life? What did she really want in her life? She's thinking, okay, how can I best serve God? She's thinking, what is the one sacrifice I can do for God? This is not so much about Hannah as it is about serving and glorifying God. And for Hannah, her one desire was to give birth to a son and give him to God for God's glory and service and honor. And we know that Hannah's son 
was named Samuel. He became a prophet, a great prophet of God. Now, I'm not sure, I'm sure not many mothers could do what Hannah did by just giving their baby to a priest and say, okay, he's all yours. Like Rachel said in the children's story, right? If I do that, I'd probably be, you know, put my hands on my head and think, what am I going to do? But think about this. Think about God honoring your request. If God honors your request after a long battle in prayer, don't you believe he knows what he's doing? Don't you believe that God will make sure your child will be okay after that long request? Don't you believe that God would do what he says he would do? Don't you believe that God will honor your child? Okay? This says something about our prayers to God as well. You know, a lot of our prayers to God are really what I call battle prayers. Because we're battling between what we want and what God wants. Battle prayers. But the truth is, we know in the end, the final result of our prayers is not what we want, it is what God wants. Now, when we look at Hannah's vow and prayer to God, it sounds good and noble. She says, God, if you grant me this child, I'll give him back to you. But think about how much faith and trust Hannah had in God when she gave her son Samuel to God. A lot of faith. This says something about our vows. Think about how many vows you personally have made in your life. For those of you who married, you gave your marriage vows. For those who are baptized, you gave your baptismal vows. Let's, let's look at those two vows for a, mo- for a moment. When we give our vows to God, do we really know what we're doing? Do we really know what we're saying? When we know what we're saying when it comes to marriage... Do we know what we're saying to God when we get baptized? That it's, that it's a commitment to God, it's a commitment to the church? Do we really know what we're saying when it comes to vows to God? But the most important quality Hannah had in her life was a strong faith in God. Because she kept worshiping God. She kept praying to God. She kept sacrificing to God even during those times when God seemed distant. Even when her rival Penina would provoke her and give her the most insulting remarks, Hannah remained faithful to God. She remained faithful in worshiping God. She even made a reference to her rival in her prayer when she prayed to God and said, I smile at my enemies. Why? Because I rejoice in her salvation. Think about that. She didn't say, I smile and manage because I, I know God got even or I got even. That wasn't the point. The point is, I rejoice God in your salvation. It's all about God's salvation. It's all about our salvation. So Hannah's main purpose was to give service to God through her son. And on Mother's Day... We need to say this. A mother's role, a mother's service to her children is a ministry to God. Let me repeat that. A mother's role and a mother's service to her children is a ministry to God. And many times a mother's role never receives the recognition it deserves as a service to God. An example of this. This past year we... Uh, Billy Graham, one of our greatest evangelists, uh, just passed away. Have you ever wondered the role that Billy Graham's mother uh, played in his life? I have something here from Billy Graham's book, Just As I Am. And in his book, Just As I Am, he gives tribute to his mother. He says, and I quote, What we did have back when our family was going through was really we cared about each other and we liked to do things together. And he says this about his mother. 
Jesus' word picture of a hen gathering her brood under her wing fits my mother. She saw to it that we gathered frequently and regularly, and not just around the dinner table or in front of the radio for a favorite broadcast. She gathered us around herself and my father to listen to Bible stories, to join in family prayers, and to share a sense of the presence of God. And on August 14th, 1981, Mauro Graham, Billy Graham's mother, quietly left this earth in her sleep and entered heaven. When word came, Mr. Graham said, of his mother's death, I wept and yet rejoiced at the same time. Of all the people I have ever known, she had the greatest influence on me. I am sure one reason that the Lord has directed and safeguarded me, as well as Ruth and the children, through the years, was the prayers of my mother and father. And speaking on Mother's Day in 2003, Billy Graham told the audience in San Diego that his mother was a farm woman. And I quote, She and my father didn't have much education, but my mother was a woman of God. She always had devotions with us, she always prayed with us, she always loved us, and did so many things as I look back now. Many times, a mother's service goes unnoticed. But today, we want to recognize a mother's service is a ministry to God. Without our mother's influence, where would we be today? On this day, may we honor our mothers. May we pray and support them in their roles as ones who serve and minister for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of our mothers, Lord. And on a special day, Lord, we pray that all of our mothers would get the honor they deserve. And God, we know that there are struggles involved that mothers deal with, Lord, with family. We pray, O oh God, that we as your people would be able to listen and understand, be patient, and pray for our mothers during the times of grief when they need it. And God, we just pray that you bless this day, the special day, as we honor our mothers this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we sing our closing hymn, let us all stand if we're able. Our closing hymn is a familiar song. It's You might know it as Faith of Our Fathers, but this is called Faith of Our Mothers. Uh, so turn with me to number 190 in the brown hymnal, Faith of Our Mothers. Would you stand, please?
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.